Okay, so here's this concrete mixer I picked up from my buddy. He was going to take it and scrap it, and I said, no way, I want to have that baby, so I gave him 20 bucks, and here we can see it being used for my first project, putting this gazebo in on the slope, so I had to put it on piers. Not sure exactly, but I think I used about 40 bags of concrete. In any case, uh, that was the summer of 2012, and here we are in the winter of 2016-2017, and I'm just getting really stir crazy sitting around the house, so I needed a project, and we'll go ahead and pick up the story right here. Well, so somehow I get working on this uh, old concrete mixer, which I picked from my buddy for 20 bucks. He was going to haul it off for scrap metal, and I said, oh, no, you're not. So, it's got three pieces of sheet metal folded here, and they're starting to split there. Actually, they had been. So I tried cutting them up and beating the hell out of them with the... I don't know if that is a three pound, five pound hammer there. I didn't make too much success, so I think I'm gonna have to try to put some rivets in there and draw them down. Tight enough so I can get a weld on there. I beat this one down pretty much, but when I did, this popped down here. This is just riveted on a few places. Because apparently this is cast and this is steel, so I didn't want to weld the steel into cast for obvious reasons. So I'm probably gonna have to drill a hole through here and put some little small bolt through there. Okay, so we were taking the uh, bolts off the side of that concrete mixer to make way to weld those seams back together. And it revealed itself that uh, two of the brackets holding these paddles on had uh, broken some time ago. You can tell by the corrosion. They have been broken for some time. This is the part that bolts onto the, uh, in the belly of the bowl of the mixer. Picked up some angle brackets at the hardware store, trying to make this easy, and cut it to approximate size, and drill new holes. Not happy about it already having holes because it's going to make it a little bit weaker, but it's quick and dirty. If it breaks or bends, we'll try something else later. Yes, yeah, so this is the bolt I cut out that holds that paddle on. And it wasn't this bracket, but the bracket on the bottom that was broken. So these are all bolted up, tighten those seams up. And we'll weld this when the stick water comes in. It's supposed to be here today, but it's getting too late in the day. You can almost just leave these bolts in and let it go like that, but that won't let me have a chance to play with my water, so... Well, I got the uh, pulley off of that concrete mixer. It was a bit of a fight, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I think it's cast iron. Two of these spokes were broken when I got it. So I was thinking about taking down to the uh, local welding shop and see if the guy could fix it there. But, uh... I think it's going to probably cost 25 to 50 bucks for his time. Plus a trip down and a trip back. So I checked on Zorro, and sure enough, you can pick up a brand new one for about $50 delivered. So I already run about 40 bags of concrete through this guy, and it didn't get any worse. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a coat of nice yellow paint so it stands out. And uh, just let it go. And if it ever does break, I'll just buy a new one. Well, I took this motor off of there to give it a fresh coat of paint. And it got away from me, and I dropped it and freaking bent that casing there. So sure enough... I have to take that sucker off and straighten it out. Oh boy, a little heavier than I thought it was. Well, we got this cover off. One screw gave us a little bit of flight, have to be replaced, no biggie. Took that capacitor cap off of there. Give it some paint on the inside. Get this thing sanded up and blow it off. Get some fresh paint on there. This will give us a chance to paint the inside of this guy. There's a dent, no biggie. Take that out with the ball peen hammer. I was thinking about just keeping this motor off and keeping it in the shed to keep it dry since this thing sits outside, albeit covered. But after this little mishap, it might be better just to leave it on the unit and keep it well wrapped. It doesn't exactly, it's pretty heavy and it doesn't sit on that uh, mounting plate in a balanced manner, so if you don't have a good grip on it, she's going to let loose. And it fell right on top of the ball, or the five pound hammer, that's what caused that dent there. Good as new. And there it is, all primer white. And in a few minutes, through the magic of YouTube, this thing will soon be a beautiful, nice, bright yellow, just like this guy here. There it is, nice, beautiful yellow. 
Got some primer going on to the old engine here. Gonna probably just paint this engine white. Make it uh, pop against that black. I was originally gonna do this in that leftover uh, Massey Ferguson red, but I thought white would be cool against that black and yellow, so I think that was the right decision. Now for the hard part, wait until tomorrow until it's good and dry, put it back together. So today we're gonna use this new clutch. Uh, 110 volt inverter, stick welder. See if that gives me any better results. And we're also going to drive it off this uh, generator, which will be running off a uh, propane tank. I've never run gasoline through this thing, so I don't want to have a chance of gumming up the works with that uh, ethanol in there, especially being that it sits most of the time. And this uh, welder will take 1 16 up to 3 30 second rods. I've got uh, one of each, or a couple of each. I think the uh, 330 seconds is probably going to give us the better results, which is the reason I bought the welder in the first place. And of course, I've practiced a little bit on an old disc brake rotor. It was sticking a little bit on me, but uh, we'll see how it works. Don't laugh, I'm a rookie here. But this will give you other rookies that are thinking about this welder a good idea of what you're up against. I'm gonna have to man up and show this to you. I'm not proud of this. What a mess. So first I started with 3.30 second up here. It seemed like it was running pretty hot. It had a little burn through right at the beginning. Then I tried switching back to the uh, 16th there and it looks like crap. So I switched back to the uh, 3.30 seconds back here. I think what this is here, there was some concrete on the metal. The metal wasn't clean, so no matter how much I tried to fill that, it just kept spattering and making a mess. So, the other thing that was happening is this edge was literally melting away as I'm welding. And plus, there's that big gap there, so my pull was uh, going down into the crevice there as the metal was going away, and I guess it just uh, exceeded my skill ability. Anyways, it's pretty nasty, so we'll see if we can make a second pass at this. Maybe to get the wire welder out. Let's take a second pass with the uh, 16th rod and see what we can do. Well, this just pains me to show you this, but I cannot tell a lie. I do this at great personal shame and embarrassment. That looks absolutely hideous. I guess I didn't get the uh, slag off the first pass there and it didn't stick at all. So I got no choice at this point. I gotta take these bolts out. It should be holding enough and uh, get the grinder down, grind that out as much as possible. And uh, we're gonna start over. Get this right if it kills me. Alright, so here's what we got. Here's a little bit of slag in these holes, but I don't want to drill this thing, so we go through and punch a big hole in there, so we'll just have to deal with that. I'm going to try doing this one more pass with the uh, rod 1 16th. This time I'm going to go down, see if it makes a difference. If not, I'll uh, patch it up again, and this time I was going to use my wire welder. But I guess this is how the uh, primitive cavemen learned how to weld. Sometimes it'd be nice to have uh, an expert here to tell you what to do, but uh, we'll figure something out. Okay, we're just gonna have to punt on this guy. I just don't have the skill to know what's going on with this uh, stick welder and make it look right. I just ground this out for the second time. Tried coming down, but it's throwing so much slag. It's like the slag is down below the bead, and then it, of course the bead's not gonna stick where the slag is. And the bead looks all right, but then you tell knock the slag off and it looks terrible. So I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna go get the old uh, wire-fed welder and see if we can do a better job on this than uh, we've been doing so far. Got it. There we go. It's my first reel. Luckily, there's another one downstairs. Be right back. Well, that was like a comedy of bloody hours, eh? So we switched to the uh, wire welder, and first we run out of wire. So I had to go down, got another reel of wire, and that's a uh, 035, and as opposed to the 030 that was in there. So no big deal, get that put back in there. And uh, well, this is before we ran out of wire. It was so hot it blew right through the metal there, so that was my first goof. And then we uh, had to adjust the tension on that reel, so the tension was too tight and it kept stalling, so I made a mess here. And then down here, I finally got my groove on. And here's where my hand slipped off as I was moving down, so we got sloppy again. 
And then we blew another halt at the end there, so I set the voltage back to one. Plus, it took me a little while to get used to that heavier wire, but uh, it's infinitely better than it looked with the uh, stick water. So I'm going to clean this up and uh, freaking put this uh, side to bed. I'm going to go do the other side. And these were where the holes were. I put the uh, screws in, the bolts in to pull this thing tight. So i got to fill it a little bit more. <laughs> All right, this is quite the adventure, huh?